judge, just no one can judge, just this is for us. Open up your brown book, baby. This for you, this for us. Open up your brown book, baby. Open up your brown book. Open up your brown book, baby. Look, open up your brown book, baby. This for you, this for us. A fantasy, no one can judge. Just no one can judge. Just what I said, that is my book, baby. Hey, y'all. Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? It's your girl, Shay, baby. Welcome back to another episode of the Brown Book Series. Y'all know what's up. It's Friday night. No, it's not Friday. I'm sorry. It's, I've been drinking already, y'all. My bad. Braming on alcohol. <laughs> It's Wednesday night, it's 7 o'clock, and the Brown Book Series is on. Call your friends, tell another friend, let them know to get in here. Because tonight, oh, I'm so excited. I have New York Times, USA Today's best selling that bitch author, baby. Let's say she is the number one, is the number one, like no jokes aside, honey. Give it up, everybody, for Miss Shayla Black. Hey everyone! Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm super excited to be here. Let's Shayla, party. I'm super excited that you're here too, honey. They said hello to you in the chat. What's up, Renata? Hey, Kaiso, what's going on, Mama? Hey, Renata. Hi, hey, Tony. Hey, y'all. Hey, all right, y'all. Wait a minute. Stop the noise. Y'all know we have a legend come through. Give it up again. New York Times, USA Today's best selling award winner author Miss Brenda Jackson's coming through. Hello, Adina. Girl, everybody, see Shayla, you bring all the boys to the yard, honey. Everyone comes through to see you because you're the best. I have not seen Brenda since an RWA convention an eon ago. So, hey, hey, hey. I love it. I love it. Listen, wait, Shayla, oh, what'd you say, Renata? Yeah, Shayla checking out your books at the library years ago. Made me feel like the librarian was talking about, oh. I get they that. Probably, I get that. I do. I, I hear that sometimes. That the librarians were talking about them? Well, all kinds of things. Like, so one of the best stories ever was um, somebody wrote me and said that they had been sitting at with one of my books at the cafe section in their local Barnes and Noble, mm -hmm. and they were reading. And she said she looked up and realized it had gotten very, very quiet. And then she realized that she was panting and kind of groaning and people were looking at her and she's like yeah i took my book and i left real fucking fast like i was <laughs> she was i knew everybody was looking at me and i was like oh my god sorry not sorry sorry not sorry it is what it is oh my god i absolutely love it uh yeah you can't be having the people acting up in uh, um in the bar in the um bookstore honey that's not cool get your life together shayla so listen <laughs> Tell us a little bit about Shayla Black. What is it like in a day in the life of New York Times, USA Today's best and author, Shayla Black? Outside of the literary world, we're going to get into all your literary stuff, girl. You have a lot of books, so we're going to get into that. But outside of that, what is your life like? And don't tell me it's boring because I don't believe you. Uh, no, it's, it's something all the time. I will say that. It's something all the time. I tend to be a workaholic, so I, I am. I, I do like work a lot, a lot, a lot. I enjoy it, so I, that's what I choose to do a lot. But we are actually currently in the middle of, um, besides a deadline I'm super behind on, but um, just launched a Kickstarter campaign today. My mother-in-law is moved from Pennsylvania to Texas this week. Like, there's just a lot happening all at once. Um, of course, we just had Halloween. We have company coming for Thanksgiving. We're doing stuff to the house. <laughs> like, there's always something going on around here. So Halloween, how was Halloween though? <laughs> what uh, you is know Halloween what? Like in your house? Normally, we have a lot of fun. Like last year, it was all like we had friends over and we had way too much booze and everybody was doing the time warp and we were having a good time. Um, this year, because we have my mother in law here, um, she had a stroke back in June. So um, we're moving her to an independent living facility about 10 minutes away. So we, and that, in fact, it was on a Tuesday this year. So we had like maybe our requisite three trick-or-treaters and it really was quiet this year. But my daughter, um, who's also an author, still lives with us. And she, um, she answered the door and she was like, 
every little kid with the, like, was their first time trick or treating and they had these cute little costumes. She would come in and she'd be like, my ovaries, my ovaries. <laughs> and my husband was like, girl, I do not want to hear about your ovaries. Wait a minute, though. Your, your daughter is a writer as well? Yeah, she's released her first two books already. The first, her name is Mallory Black, and her first book is How to One Night Stand, and the second one is How to Fake a Fiance. How to One Night Stand, girl? What do your husband say when he hears? Like, I mean, like oh. And then when she gets reviews, going, "This is a really hot book," he's like, "La la 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 la." <laughs> like, I don't want to hear any of that shit. <laughs> I it's absolutely like, love it. I love it. Now, Shayla. Okay. You got a whole heap of books, as old folks say. You got a whole heap of books now. I do. When you start, you do. And I, I, I love them. I love it. So, traditionally published or indie, which one do you fall in that? Because I just, some of the stuff you write, a lot of the stuff you write, I'm like, I know good and damn well. The, whoever her publisher is, is like, ugh. Well, okay, so I recently just um, celebrated my 25th publishing anniversary. So when I started, there was nothing but traditional publishing. You didn't have a choice. That was it. So I actually traditionally published um, between 1998 when my first I sold my first book, which actually came out in early 99. And um, my last traditionally published book was July of 2019. And then I decided, yeah. And then I decided I was like, I enjoy business. I want to have control of things. And yeah, I said, I think I'm done here. Shayla, your books are hot and heavy. So did they, so, okay. All right. Well, you used to send yourself over to your editor, right? Did, were they ever like Shayla? You got to tone this down or you got to, you know, not do this or you can't well, say this word. Um, It depended. So um, when I very first started, oh, I have no idea why my Zoom keeps doing that or my okay. computer keeps doing that. Um, <laughs> Anyway, the um, when I very first started writing Wicked Lovers for Berkeley. Yeah. You know, they were like, bring it on. The hotter, the better. Like, that's fantastic. And so I was writing these really long, really meaty, super, super hot books. And that was kind of my jam. And I, I was fun, right? Right. Um, then in 2008, I launched a series with another publisher that um, was actually my paranormal series. And that was the first thing she took out of the books was pretty much all the sex <laughs> she was like nobody needs all this sex nobody wants all that sex and I was like I don't think you understand my readership and she was like no 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 no. it's it's just it's overkill nobody wants all this like I'm just the books are too long and you're spending too much time with people fucking like nobody wants all that and I was like I don't I think you're wrong but okay like you know they were publishing the book and there was not a lot I could do about it so mm -hmm. four books in, um, I was contracted for a fifth book, four books in, I just said, I, we're done here. I, this isn't working for me anymore. Um, so I ended up waiting and waiting and waiting and um, hiring attorneys and fighting the good fight. And I finally got the rights back to oh. my paranormal series so that I could relaunch it myself which is the book that came out last week. Nice. Oh my God. That is crazy though. There. Yes. Tempted with the what dumb, tempted with darkness. There. Love it. Absolutely love it. We're definitely going to get with, with Tempt Me with Dark. It is a cute book too. I, I like books with the blues and you know what I'm saying? The blues and blacks, like the dark colors. Well, don't let it fool you because I took the the book back from said publisher and i just pretty much added the 20,000 words of sex right back in so wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> but hold on though so when you took okay so when you know once you, you did all this you, you your books went out the four books went right yeah you already had a loyal fan base did yeah, they, were they kind of like mm, Shayla, what's up did you become a christian or something or like how was what was they like 
Um, well, remember, it was such a different time then. We didn't really have social media. Not even everybody had an email address. It was 2008. Yeah. So honestly, I feel like because we had all of these people between the author and the reader that we don't have anymore, it was hard to know what people thought. Now, what I'll tell you is for the next dozen plus years, um, I got emails from people every week, mm. every week um, saying, you know, are you going to finish this series? What happened to these people? Like, I'm so excited. You know, what's, I? you know, please tell me there's an end. So-and-so didn't get a book. So-and-so didn't get a book. And when I started telling people, okay, listen, I got the rights back and I am going to a hundred percent like sex this pitch up. This is the, this is the version I had in my head, not the version that they wanted me to tell. So, exactly. um, that's, that's pretty much what I'm doing now is, is this is like the, I, you know, this is like the chance to do it the way I intended to do it all along. I absolutely love, it. absolutely love. It. Let's go over here in this old chat real quick. Uh, Mincy, what's up, boo? That's why the uh, BBS crew checking in. Hi, Mincy. Hey, hey, hey. Renata, what's do? JB, JB says, I'm here. She says, I might be late, but I am here. They're saying, welcome to you, Shayla. Thank you. Yes, Shayla's coming in. Miss Jackie Johnson, what's up, Auntie Jackie? She's checking in. They absolutely loving you over here. Shayla, you are, you know, you're our kind of girl. And uh, we love- Because I write you... dirty books? Oh, uh, yes, because yeah, you author dirty books. It's wonderful. Good dirty books, though. Because some people just write sex and you'd be like- Girl, that's I need plot life. and I need character development yes. and I need emotion. Like I need all the things to go with it or I get bored. Like I can't do it. Yeah, girl, you do all that. I'll be like, honey, she, honey, she needs to be on cinema stuff the dark. I love it. I absolutely love it. <laughs> absolutely love it. Now it's bringing us to the first, um, our first game here at the Brown Book Series. Our first segment is called Name That Book. <laughs> what <Well, we> <laughs> well, we take, we take a character, a passage, or something, synopsis, or something related to one of your books, and you have to name that book. Now, you do have a lot of series, so we give you a character's name. We need, we want the book that that character is the hero or the heroine of. Okay. You ready, Shayla? I'll do my best. You're going to do great. I'm telling you, you're going to do great. <laughs> and you guys in the chat, Shay, this is our first time here at the Brown Book Series. We're going to be real nice. I say I'm nice the very first time, Shayla. You know what I'm saying? Because I want okay. to come back. Perfect. You know? So then you're just telling me I shouldn't come back, right? No, no, no. You you, you don't have no choice, Shayla. You got to come back. You know, we, we got history. I'm teasing. So yeah, you got no choice. So it's going to be good. It's going to be easy. You know, you got to think back, Shayla. You got to think now. We got to think about passages. Can, you got to think about I can synopsis, do it. All this stuff. You got it? I got it. All right, here we go. Y'all do not help her in the chat, okay? Don't help her in the chat. <laughs> here we go. Name that book. What does it say? Then the tailor's word re words were played in her head. Her euphoria crumbled. My death was settled, you say? He sent her a crisp nod. Precisely. <laughs> Can you elaborate how? Name that book. Strictly Seduction. Girl, you better. Let me tell you something. Yes. <laughs> you wrote your book. <laughs> yes. Well before AI was ever a thing, and I don't believe in it anyway. Me either. You wrote your book. Wait, tell us a little bit about Strictly Seduction, honey. So this was a book. It's so funny that I really, really wanted to write. And it was the first of a super sexy Victorian duet. Um, and I was like, how, how sexy? Because I was still writing historicals at this point. I was like, how much sexiness can I get away with? And uh, it turned out a lot because my editor had just left to have baby number three and they gave me to another editor who had no idea oh what goodness. was happening. And so between the two of them, I just kind of got to do whatever I wanted to do, which was <laughs> fantastic. I was super happy about that. So they had tons and tons of sex in that book. Um, but the funny part was in order to get there, previous to that, they the publisher had asked me to write a Christmas book the previous year. And I was like, it's supposed to be an honor to be asked to write these Christmas books, but girl, that is not my speed. And she was like, 
I, I know that's awful. I'm like the least sentimental romance writer you're ever going to want to meet in your life. And she was like, um, I just need you to write something sweet and heartwarming. And I was like, are you reading the books I'm sending you like at all? And she was like, okay, all right. Just write me something with some Christmas and not a whole lot of sex. And I was like, still not up my alley. Sorry. Mm. I, I mean, I ended up doing it. It's So when I got the rights back to all my historicals, that is a book I'm burying under the bed forever because I was like, I didn't want to write this book. This is not a book that I'm happy with. It, mm -mm, it was just a big hard no. But in order to get to write my sexy Victorians, I had to write the Christmas book. So you went out here and just, you just said, look, Mr. Lawyer Man, here's a list of what I need back. Go. And you just got all your rights back. Well, no, the early um, historical contracts back in the late 90s were all time-based contracts. So after mm -hmm. a certain number of years, you just automatically got your rights back and all you had to do was write them a letter saying, hey, like TikTok, your rights have expired. It's my turn. Give me that shit back, yeah. right? Right. Then after 2000, we got into contracts where it was like you have to your sales have to drop below a certain threshold. And then it got more complicated when you added eBooks and POD books because there was no standard definition of out of print anymore or what constituted being out of print. Because back in the day before eBooks, it was your book was either on a shelf or it wasn't. Oh, that, right. that was out of print. And so what's happened now is that standard terminology has no meaning anymore because everything is perpetually in print right there's right. there's never not a time where that book is not in print in some form or fashion so getting your rights back now is just a bitch and a half to be 100 percent honest so when i got the rights back to doomsday brethren um I wrote my last book in that series in 2012. And then I realized if I ever wanted to finish it the way I wanted to, I had to start back at book one and start all over again. I couldn't build on a foundation that wasn't what I wanted to do. So I had to drop it from every piece of everything I ever did, the back of every book, off my website. I couldn't talk about wow. it. Like it was the verboten topic on Team Black for like eight years. Kid you not. Two wow. attorneys. Yeah. Two attorneys, an agent and a whole bunch of letter writing and lawsuit threatening later. I finally got my rights back. The wow. week of Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. You should yeah. that <laughs> but, Well, and my agent wrote me and she goes, it's a fucking Christmas miracle. Yes. <laughs> and I was like, isn't it? I love, it's a shame we had to go through all that though. You know, it's like, okay, I wrote the book. I don't want you to have it no more. Give me my shit back. What's the well, problem? it would be different money off if me they already. Were, Yeah, and it would be different if they were doing something for them, right? But they yeah, were right. literally sitting there languishing and they had horrible covers that I was never a fond of to start with. But the bigger problem was, I had written one book in the series indie and what mm. they did was they price jumped. And then right before you would go buy my book to continue, it was hella expensive and nobody was ever going to buy that book. And I was like, really? Re wow. This is the game we're going to play. Okay. Wow. So you showed them how to play the game. I love it. See, you all kind well, of, I, well, I, you know, I tell people all the time, I'm just, I'm just, a stubborn bitch. I'm not like, <laughs> I'm just not going to give up. I've been doing this too long. I absolutely love it. That's why we love you. All right. Next up, name that book. Character, Mark Sullivan. Um, Strip search. Strip search. Yay. Okay. You do it great, honey. I'm loving this. You ready? Yeah. Name that book. With the clock ticking and all of her ambitions at stake, the last thing she needs is this gorgeous owner of a sex club tempting her with the forbidden. Watch me. Watch me. I love that cover. Oh, my God. Tell us a little bit about Watch Me. Um, so I wrote this book for a small press um, back in, I want to say like 2008 or nine. Um, which was Sam Hain, and they're not around anymore. And it's sad because I really enjoyed working with Sam Hain a lot. Mm -hmm. And I was one of those weird um, traditionally published authors who was also writing for small presses because I knew 
that eBooks were going to be huge. I mean, right. I knew that early. And I remember having an argument with one of my editors um, in like mid 2006. And I'm telling her this and she laughs at me and she's like, ha ha, ha ha, eBooks are one half of 1% of all of our revenue. I don't think we need to be worried. And I'm like, I think you're being really short-sighted and stupid, but okay, you do you. Right. And um, so then I, when I, they got really angry when I went off and started, you know, writing for some small presses, but they had these rabid, you know, wanted the really super hot books um, audience and, and they were almost all eBooks. And I was like, I want some of that audience. Cause I know that's where the future of romance is. Right. And um, so the owner of, Sam Hain, Chrissy Bashir wanted to do a duet. So she had me um, work with JC Burton. And so I wrote Watch Me and she wrote, oh my gosh, I had it and it's gone. But she wrote, it was something else me and they came out together. Mm -hmm. And they were companion books because in that, uh, in Watch Me, the hero is Alessandro and his um, friend, Del, uh, the two of them owned the sex club together. So it was kind of like about them and their friendship and, um, you know, them finding somebody, et cetera. Et cetera. I love yes. it. I love it. All right. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> you got to go check it out. Dot, dot, dot. All right. Next up, name the book. Don't I like <laughs> his condition is life or death. He's going to survive for fuck's sake. Now that I don't remember, because I could have said that in a lot of places. <laughs> <laughs> but like the next line, he's like, you know, come on over here. I forgot where they were, but he's like, come over here. I like a little wife on this old camera, honey. Uh, it's just the daddy had cancer. Um, it's a it's a duet. It's part two. You tell one of the stories. It's another one. Um, it's from your wicked lover, soldiers for hire series. Um, I was gonna say it sounds a little bit something like one mile would say. No, one mile was one, but no, this one is. No, oh, we, I see. I should know this. It was the most recent. It's the most recent one. It is, but honestly, that's the problem with romantic suspense. There's always like somebody. Who's on the verge of death? It, it really was. I felt bad. I was like, oh my God, her dad died for real. He was like, man, whatever. It's just cancer. Quit tripping. I was like, wait a minute. Is it cancer? What's wrong? <laughs> no, it was. It yeah, was. but he was just like, it ain't death to life. It was just. <laughs> I said, now he, he was okay in part one. What's happening over here? Now, this whole series, Wicked Lovers, Soldiers for Hire. In a nutshell, tell us a little bit about what this whole series is about. So this was um, like I wanted to take what I did for Wicked Lovers when I was writing them at Berkeley, but I wanted to make the suspense bigger. It was. And I wanted to I just wanted to blow the whole thing up. It's actually um, it's about the security team. If you read the OG Wicked Lovers mm -hmm. um Hunter and his brother, Logan, and their stepbrother, Joaquin, you know, kind of inherited dad's business when he got remarried and decided to retire. So they ended up renaming it EM Security Management and taking over. Didn't make a lot of friends at first because, <laughs> um, you know, running a business can be, you know, sometimes you have to be the bad guy. Yeah. Um, but uh, I had so much fun just like taking the first few books in this series and making it all about different angles of trying to take down this one cartel. Right. And, you know, everybody, there's nothing more fun. I mean, if you're not going to write super hot sex and there's nothing more fun than writing somebody who's just batshit crazy, yeah. like one mile, you know, you just, you hog tie the bad guy in a bathtub and then hook him up to a battery, threaten him. Like there's no more good fun than that. It was the name for me. I said, I love, the name was just sexy for me, One Mile. I'm like, this is cute. I just like the name. I don't know why. Uh, well, you know, but snipers like to give themselves names like that. And a kill shot like that really is, um, you know, there's probably less than a dozen people in the world that can do a kill shot like that. So 
I know this is cute. Yeah, the whole um. So let me understand this series though. So did you just was it a re wasn't a rewrite? You no. Mm -mm. So did you re-release them or no no no? This is a jump in time. Right. Okay. These okay, are okay. different. These is so this is some of the OG characters, but later. So okay. it's like you passed time and okay. now you're seeing them and the introduction of new people. So like one mile and you know, the a guy from Wicked and Bear Matt, like all of these guys, they work for Hunter, Logan, and Joaquin. And yes. so it's okay. kind of like the continuing adventures um On and that. time. So I've taken like a time jump since the end of Wicked Lovers. And I think we're ahead now. I'm getting, I'm closing in on something like 10 years. Okay, girl. Cause honey, I was confused for my head, put my weed down. And I was like, hold on. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's like if people kept asking me like, what's happening next with these people? I need to understand like, what are they doing? But you stopped writing and I need to know. And so that was sort of my idea was, okay, I'm going to blow this bitch up. So that's why everything's, told in these giant duets yeah so okay. now when you get done like when i was done with matt and madison that was one hundred and eighty thousand words it was a lot yeah it was a lot yeah. and um and so yeah it's but it was good, they're though. all duets and they're all like like i said we're getting forward in time now right it's a lot and, and i'm i'm and i'm just gonna be honest you know honey girl I, I my adhd kick in i'm like i cannot but your books are so good like, okay it makes you it, it it don't seem like it's that long it's funny because I send them to my editor and, and I'm always like, look for something to cut because this has gotten really long. And she always sends them back to me and she goes, if I could find something for you to you cut, I would. But yeah, she you said, can. you've been doing just this so like long, me. you know, when you need something. And I'm right. like, yeah, no, unfortunately, I need like all this movie. shit. Uh, Reads like a movie, girl. You go to the bathroom, and you miss something. <laughs> no. I'm telling you, I'm like, oh no. Well, and I had so much fun, honestly, with Matt and Madison because honestly, her ex's family they're all just some of the most heinous people on the planet like anywhere so that's sometimes writing the bad guys are really the fun part i absolutely love it all right name the book i've been cursed and i'm out for vengeance i'll do anything in my damnation including kidnap an innocent with telling violent eyes oh that's tempt me with darkness that's Tempted with Darkness. That's the yeah. Merrick, Darkness. Yeah. Merrick has been alive for 1,500 years. He's, you know, after 1,500 years without any <clears throat> company, you might be a little crazy too. <laughs> Tell us about this book. What are, <laughs> how many, how many going to be in this series? Um, so that's the other thing. Like, originally, I mean, I at least have... Hold up. I think... Oh, Lord. I know, right? I think there's nine, there's eight or nine, I can't remember off the top of my head, that I always intended to do. But one of the things in getting this series back, I had, um, I had like other paths I could go down and spin offs. Like, this is a giant world. This right. is a giant world. Um, and it's fun. Like, people have said to me that they think this is fantasy, but it's not. It's not fantasy. I thought it was too. No, yeah. it's straight up paranormal yeah some people yeah. think think it's fantasy because he is from arthurian times right. but we're never going back there like we're just continuing forward so the next book actually will be about another couple you'll continue to see merrick and olivia right but we're we're going forward and it's almost everything is set in you know magical london i think sometimes um some people, because I know some of like the readers that I encounter with, they do get a mixed up on fantasy and paranormal. Like it's almost like it's a fine line. How do you um, how do you di differentiate that? Like how do you uh, make sure that you don't cross over into fantasy and you kind of stay in your lane of paranormal since they're so closely together? They are be because good. they they both involve a ton of world building, right? right. Um, I think the difference for me is I'm not going to like a made up place or a made up time. Um, there's no like middle earth and, you know, there's none of that kind of thing. It's really all. And I actually originally wrote this series because I was the girl who enjoyed like paranormal light. I didn't want a whole bunch of like, if I had to 
if I couldn't pronounce the names and I couldn't figure out where we were and what was happening, like I just, I didn't want to concentrate that hard right. <laughs> when I was right. reading for fun. So I wanted a paranormal that once you get through the world rules, which, you know, there are some, but not that many really, um, then it would just kind of read like a contemporary romance with some woo-woo. That was yeah. really my jam. Okay. And so honestly, um, now we've done the hard part, which for me was still fun because I think Merrick and Olivia's kind of back and forth enemies to lovers thing, like that's always yeah. one of my favorite tropes anyway. Right. Um, but now we're getting down to the place where it's it's all going to be people from this time period. And so there's no more like, you know, his Arthurian speak and all of that. Like that was just for him because he was from that place in time. I absolutely love it. Shayla, I love your books. Thank you. You are so I really, sweet. really do. Let's go over here and play in this old chat, honey. Let's see what the children are talking about over here. Let's see here. Let's see here. Okay. I want to say hello to Miss to um Miss Brenda Jackson. Okay, wait a minute. Oh, I don't know what's going on over there. Oh, yeah, they tell me to be nice. I am nice. Shayla's my friend, and she know how I am. <laughs> they tell me to qu act like Pinocchio because I'm lying. No, Shayla's my friend. She know how we do. We drink and we curse and we have fun. Hey, Shayla, how y'all? Hey, Kim James checking in. Hey, y'all. Hey, let's see here. That's right. Okay, they all saying they love you on the chat. Hey, Miss Colita. Hey, girl. What you say, Shannon? Shannon says, tempt me with darkness. It's darkness. It's all the things. Love so much. Girl, okay. Shannon. That's what I'm talking about. They loving it, honey. Because every I'm telling you, it's it's a wonderful thing. It's it is a wonderful thing. I'm glad I'm glad you were able to go back, grab your stories, and re-release them how you want them to be, you know? Yep. Yep. And I actually um I actually picked as I was redoing this book, I picked two beta readers, neither of whom, I mean, they were both like, I really don't like paranormal and I really don't want to read this book. And I was like, well, please, as a favor to me, would you please tell me where I've confused you, what you're not understanding, what you don't like? Like I was trying very hard to say, this is a paranormal series that even if you're not a paranormal reader, you can read this. And they both came out of the other side of this going, okay, I, I will read this series because I really love this book. So that was kind of awesome. You've been you dropping a whole lot of gems, honey. I'm telling you, the, the girls who are just um really hyped on, I mean, it's good to be traditionally published and all the good stuff, but you you dropping gems to let them know, like, listen, even if you're doing something that you don't want to do or whatever in this world, you can fight, you can get your rights back and you can win. It can happen. You can, can. And go indie and do your thing. So I love yep. that about you. I love I, it. And I am always, like, always, always innovating. I just, I'm never, I never want to be that person. I mean, I, in traditional published land, like, you always wrote third person past tense that everybody did. There was no yeah. choice. That was what yeah. everybody did. Girl, I write so much first person present tense now. Mm -hmm. And, and I love it. I do. And I know, and for, you know, sometimes I'm like, I don't like first person because I'm used to the third, but I can read you all day. I feel like, what's one of the books? Was it Caleb? I felt like I was Caleb. Well, I can't remember what book it was, but I was just like, yo, I can, Shayla is all right. I just, I love it. I absolutely love it. Thank you. Now, your books, your, you, your collaboration, Lexi Blake is going to be on the show next week, you guys. You have a couple of collaborations with Lexi Blake. How did that relationship form? Uh, through a lot of alcohol. Oh, okay, well, cool. That's how our relationship formed. Yeah. So <laughs> one of the best stories ever, um, and Lexi and I have a lot of them, but one of the funniest stories um, early in our relationship, we don't live that far apart, like maybe 45 minutes. So we started meeting for lunch and we started meeting in particular at this one Mexican food place and we oh, would then decide like if we were slinking to margarita three or four on any given <laughs> lunch. And um, we were having a conversation one day about um, taking a, like writing a series that was very much Harlequin-esque, but mm -hmm. super, super freaking filthy. So that's how we started the Masters of Menage series. We were, right. and so we were sitting at the bar talking about 
how many, you know, how, how many dudes is too many to fuck at once? That was basically the question. So don't think that as we're sitting in the bar drinking a lot of margaritas and having this conversation, there wasn't a lot of like rubbernecking and looking at us like, who are these girls and are they really game? <laughs> I absolutely love it. Well, speaking of how many dudes do it take to fuck at once, it brings us to the next segment here in the Brown Book series called Who'd You Rather? <laughs> oh, well, we yeah, we take your heroes, we pit them against each other, and you let oh. us know who you want to have Ooh. a one-night stand with. We ain't talking about no love. We don't care nothing about none of that stuff. No, no, no. this about... is straight up orgasm count. Okay. That's it. Hit it and quit it. Keep it going. Okay. Now, let's go over to the Wicked Love and Soldier for Hire series, okay? Okay. Who'd you rather? <laughs> Pierce One Mile Walker? Oh, or you know what? Zaza Garrett. So... I would pick one mile just for the pure craziness factor because he would be he would be a crazy fuck. Zai is nice. Zai, right. I mean, Zai is, you know, Zai has a caring side. He's a crazy motherfucker too. He really is, but he at least has a caring side. One mile, it's it's questionable. <laughs> yes. One mile. I pick one mile too. I'm like, yeah, I would love him. Definitely. Definitely. All right. Let's I like go the crazy factor. The, he's a crazy one, baby. Let's play with the Reed family. Let's go over there with them. Okay. Max and Reed or Griffin? Oh, I'd take Griff all day long because yeah. he is the most most ruthless son of a bitch yeah. ever. Like, yeah. I am all about that. Yeah. yeah. Maxon, at least, again, he has a little redeeming, a little redeeming value. Like, he tries, kind yeah. of. Griff doesn't even try. He's like, no, mm, Griff, no. I picked Griff, too. I was like, yeah, Griff is good. Yeah, I love him. Now, that, you know, I love your books. I love all of them, but your Forbidden Confessions, I love them. I, I absolutely I, They're do. so much fun, and I'm writing one right now, and it's like Listen. already crazy pants. I'm, I yeah. love, I absolutely love them. All right, so your, your Forbidden Confessions, who'd you rather? Chad Force or Nathan Price? Um, God, that's hard. I know. You know, for different reasons. Mm -hmm. I love Chad's mind. There is nothing more attractive to me than a guy who's highly intelligent. Like, mm -hmm. I am super attracted to a dude with a great brain, which Chad 100% has. Um, but Nathan is completely ruthless. Like, mm -hmm. he's utterly, utterly without mm -hmm. any qualms whatsoever. Like, mm but so I'd probably take Nathan. <laughs> okay. Nathan, it, it is. All right. So hold on now. From your temp, okay, same forbidden um confessions. We well, okay. go over here to the tempted by the executives. Who'd you rather? Marcus or Josh? Oh, Marcus. Okay. Marcus, yeah. he's absolutely he's a he's like a bull in a china shop. Yeah. Marcus Josh tries to finesse things and he yeah. tries to be the peacemaker and make nice and Josh, or Marcus is like, yeah, no, screw all that noise. I love, you know, I, I I mean, like I said, I love all your books, but I love that series of yours. My favorite is, um, oh my God, he's the billionaire. What's the, uh, oh my God, Jet and Whitney. It's, um, That's my favorite too. Yes, girl, something about that. What's the name of the book? Uh, seduced by the enemy. Enemy. By the enemy. Yeah, I love uh, Jet. Oh, so, I he so so ruthless. Yes, I love him. No, and then the wait, whole hold it. Is it I, seducing the enemy or seduced by the enemy? I can't it's remember. By, but it's crazy because that one was the one. Hold on, let me see. Because you know it's been a while that the brother stole his idea or something, stole his business thing, and yeah. she kind of betrayed him. Girl, I was like, don't take her back. She's a, you know, but I love it. Yeah, well, she was, she was only 16. So I don't think she really knew the ins and outs of what was happening. And then once she did, it was kind of too late. Yes. That's what I was like, you know, but I love, I'm telling you, I love, love, love that. I love that book. I love that story. You that know what? Cool. Um, Jason Clark did the audio for that book. He did an amazing job. Like hearing Jason Clark narrate that, but it was like a whole nother level for me. Like it was awesome. Oh, uh, you know, I absolutely love that. See, I'm like, now I gotta go and freaking listen to Jason Clark do the book. 
Then they send, oh, Lexi is a great author. Yes, they love Lexi as well. Yeah, like their books are good. They're, they're, they're together. I was like, you don't know who picked up what, where in it, where, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. I absolutely love you two together. Let's see here. Author's moment. What's your most urgent priority for the rest of the year, both in your literary world and in your personal life? Um, let's see my probably and it's top of mind if i if i can um talk about i just today with golden angel sierra cartwright yeah. uh renee rose and samantha cole launched a kickstarter called dark dangerous and vengeful girl talk um, about that and golden angel was just on with us a couple of weeks ago Yes. Um, and she was on a gag order, so she couldn't talk about it. But since we are launched today, um, she did and, say that. She was. yes. And so I can talk about it now. Okay. Um, I actually am so excited about this. It's something that, so in the vein of not being told what we can and can't do, because right. I'm, I don't play that game with me. It's not, it's not going to end well, no, like we know. ever. I don't we know about it, but we know. Yeah. <laughs> so Sierra and I started talking in 2017 about an idea and we wanted to write this idea and we didn't want to change the name of the book. It needed to be exactly, exactly what we wanted it to be. But, you know, there wasn't a book platform out there that was going to let us say, you know, anything fuck, period. Okay. Right. So we were like, how are we going to do this? What are we going to do? You know, what is the path forward to do this thing that we think is really awesome and meaningful to us? Right. So we looked and looked and looked. And finally, we were like, Kickstarter won't tell us that we can't say that word. We found that out. We were like, ooh, now we have like life for our project. Mm -hmm. So for like the last, well, we started in January. We launched today. That's how long we've been planning, like in earnest to do this. I actually just got the proof of the book yesterday. Haven't even taken it out of the plastic. So if you nice. can see how shiny all of that foiling is. Um, oh, love it. And upside down. Um, y'all, this is 700 pages. That was the other problem. You can't even get Amazon to print this. It's too long. You have to find somebody else to print this. So it was a whole nother reason because we've had people say, why Kickstarter? Why not someplace else? Because we had to go someplace else. Nobody was going to let us say revenge fuck. Nobody was going to let us print a book that they just don't print books that big. Right. So um, it was just a whole like almost reinventing the wheel in a way. But this is like it's it's everything that we wanted it to be. And it's like like I said, uh, we funded in nine minutes like it was the best thing ever because I was like I woke up this morning and and I was talking to Sierra and I was like, I personally would 100 percent read and I have read all the stories um, in here. And I'm like, I 100% would read like five brand new stories about somebody, you know, and a revenge fuck. But I was like, I hope that I'm not misreading the room. <laughs> and oh, I was like, wouldn't like, I'm like, who doesn't want to read this? Like, I want to read this. Surely everybody wants to read this. You're right. You, you can tell within nine minutes, everyone wants to read it. So I was so relieved many, because I was like, how many stories are in it? Five. Five no. all brand new stories that have never been like this is their first out into the world. Yeah. Nice. We are very excited. Like we are very excited. And there's all kinds of goodies with it. I don't have it with me. My husband took it away from me. But one of them, um, I have a a reader a friend who does like hand burned wood objects. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that she's made for this collection is a bookmark. Um, hang on. It's about this size. This is something she did for me at a previous time, but it's about this size. But um, on the front of it, it says, um, get fucked. And it has a hand painted rose <laughs> and a red tassel. It's really cute. 
Um, she does all kinds of things. And then another thing you can get in the collection is this journal that says, tell me your secrets. Oh, I love that. Now that's nice. Just, you I know, you can write whatever you want in it. So just all kinds of fun little things. And there's companion books. If you're into, you know, collector's edition kind of things, we have other books that you can get um, with the foiling. Like it's, it's just a huge collection. How can, that they, get, how can they get this though? Um, on Kickstarter, I can try to drop a link if that's, if I can get my act together, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I was not prepared for this, but okay. I should have been. I am so sorry. It's okay. It's okay. You, listen, we can drop the link. We can email it out and all the good stuff. I got it. Here we go. Oh. Copy and I will... Oh, I can't, can I? How can I drop this? I don't know. Let me see. Oh, put it in the... Uh. If I click join the chat, I don't know what it will... Do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to StreamYard, but I'm used... Like, okay, not really sure. Let's see. Can I? Nope, it's not going to let me. You know what? Send it to um, me. You know what, y'all? If you just go to Kickstarter and type in my name, you'll see it. Yeah, go to Kickstarter, type in her name. We'll get the link from her later and put it in the description box below. So when you go back for your replay, it'll all be there. How about Thank that? Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. I I wasn't realizing that um, I couldn't just drop you a link. I'm sorry. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, comment is hot. Love, Shelly. Yes, they absolutely love it. I cannot wait to get this. This is going to be awesome. You know, I'm going to be like, let's go. I love it. Absolutely. And then my it. personal priority for the rest of the year is um, probably just making sure my mother-in-law is gets settled yeah. well. And then my mother is coming for Christmas. I lost my dad last year, so oh, it's going to be... Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, he yeah. was 85. What do you say? I mean, I miss him to death. I really, really do. But he was he was sick and he's better off. And, you know, that's what I keep telling myself. Yeah, I got you. But we'll still like we'll still we'll see my like, great vibes of comfort and, and wonderful and all, and all that good stuff your way for this holiday season. It's, it you know, it's, it's nice that it's not the first Christmas without dad. Like the first Christmas without dad was really hard. I'll be honest. Right, right, yeah. I please trust me. I know. I still can't celebrate Father's Day. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But hey, every day it'll get e you know it'll get easier and easier, and you'll yeah. be good. Take care yeah. of mom, love on yes. her, and just yes. appreciate the one, you know appreciate the one who's still here. You're good. Absolutely. That's that's just it. And I think I feel like you know. People say it all the time, but you you learn the lesson over and over that um, you just you never know when somebody won't be here anymore. And that's you should love them every day you can. Every day you can, you know, yep. and I tell people, too, because some even it don't matter how, how old a person gets. I tell people all the time, I'm like, listen, some people and just to be honest, some people die and just be dead. And then some people die. You'd be like, golly, you'd be like, well, Shay, he was 95. I don't care. I wish, you know, so it. It is what yeah. it is. Especially, you know, we have good good people. But girl, honey, your daddy had to go see Jesus. Girl, he had time to be down here while you writing revenge. Fuck. Can you want to see that? <laughs> <laughs> he was kind of used to it. The truth is, dad probably wanted to go see Jesus and be like, listen, could we could we sit down with a jack and water and have some conversation yeah, now? Girl, I, he just had to go first to open the door for my little, you know, my daughter. I know it, but just you know, when it's, when it's her time, just let her come on in. <laughs> She means well. She means well, Jesus. See? Listen, I'm too much like my dad. My mom says all the time that she feels like she had, was like literally not involved in all of this because I am so much like my dad. I yeah. am so much like my dad because yeah. he had a pretty much, you know, fucking attitude about everything. And I'm like, yep. Yep. Me too. That's how yep. I was just like my dad too, honey. We was righteous and ratchet. I loved it. Yep. <laughs> yep. Absolutely love it. I of this moment in being a novelist, what did you learn a little too late? Hmm. Uh, you know, it, something that I can't really change, which is, you know, the, the advice that they give authors now is stay in your lane. Yeah. You know, if you write romantic suspense, write romantic suspense. If you write spicy contemporary, write spicy contemporary. Like I, I just, I can't do it. 
Like I have now I have basically five series I'm writing all, you know, in some form or fashion, like all the time. And they're all slightly different. You know, I still write, um, I'm still writing the unbroken series with um, Jenna Jacob. And so we've got, you know, that's a full on, you know, menage. I always called it my BDSM, like um, soap opera series, yeah. because it really was kind of like that ongoing, you know, it's kind of perfect for serialization in a lot of ways. And, you know, every one of those four book sets about a trio is like a half a million words. Like there's yeah. just a lot happening. Um, so that takes time, obviously the paranormals, you know, I'm, as I'm redoing and adding to the doomsday brother, and that takes a lot of time, um, wicked lovers, soldiers for hire. I write one of those, you know, at the top of every year. And that's like a four or five month process to write those wow. two books back to back, you know, forbidden confessions I love to do, but they're, they're all slightly different too. Right. Um, you know, the first the first four were about, you know, I called them my first time. Um, the second four were the protectors. So they had kind of a romantic suspense bent to yeah. them. Um, and now I'm on my filthy rich bosses. And I think I'm writing the last one about that. Um, and then I don't know what I'll do after that. You need to take a, go to sleep, take a break, good grief. I don't sleep much and I don't rest well. And people will always say like, have you watched thus and such on TV? I'm like, girl, no, I don't have time for that shit. I, know, like, I, just, I don't that. care most of the time. Like, no. I'm the same way. I am actually the same way. <laughs> I'll tell you, girl, but mm -mm. off this moment, if you could have tea with one fictional character of yours, who would oh, it be my. and why? Hmm. God. Different people for different reasons. Um, probably like if, if I could pick a heroine, I would probably pick, I would probably pick Jolie mm. from holding on tighter just mm -hmm. because, um, you know, I wrote her almost as shades of me. Ooh. that really sort of um, like I run a business, I don't have time for BS. Right. You, you know, all of that is very me. Um, yeah. But I wonder if we'd actually get along in person. <laughs> <laughs> um, a hero, I would be, it would be interesting to, I think I would probably pick somebody like Chad Forrest just because, like I said, I get, I'm so, like that would be the never ending conversation. I love to have, and I'm that weird person, too, who will watch documentaries about things like, you know, everything from astronomy to paleontology. Like, I will watch documentaries about the weirdest. Like, yeah. I watched one about death masks once. It, it <laughs> makes no sense. Like, I will watch documentaries about all kinds of things. I love to learn. Like, I'm constantly sponging right. stuff all the time, at reading sub stacks. And, like, I'm I'm all the time trying to intake information. Um so I think I would be interested in talking to him strictly, well, not strictly, <laughs> from an intellectual <laughs> perspective, but, you know, we can start there. <laughs> okay, to see how it is, though. I yeah. absolutely love it. All right, yeah. office moments. If you could sit down with your 15-year-old self, oh my gosh. what would you tell her? Um, you know, I think I would probably say that, um, I think I would tell myself, that being stubborn isn't bad. Right. You know, you, you do that thing when you're a teenager and you fight with your mom and, you know, she's always saying how stubborn you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I would tell myself to stand my ground more than I actually did because I think I would have saved myself from doing some stupid, like, going to a school I didn't want to go to some just decisions that I wouldn't have made if I'd had my druthers. Okay. I understand. I love it. I absolutely love it. Dead or alive, Shayla. If you were hosting a dinner party, oh, gosh. and could invite five people from any era, who would it be? Hmm. Hmm. That's rough. I know, right? Um, 
I see, I think I would pick people from all over the spectrum. Yeah. I would pick somebody like Stephen Hawking just because how interesting is that? Yeah. Like the amount of, again, the brain power the and the knowledge and the, the understanding of things that I think 99% of people will never understand, you right. know, on a level that is just incomprehensible for most people because nobody's Stephen Hawking smart. Right. Um, Henry VIII would be super interesting to me. Okay. <laughs> like, dude, what's with you? You know? Like, okay. What's with you, dude? Honestly. Yeah. Um, I think it would be interesting to invite somebody like John Lennon. Oh, that will, yeah. Just, I, I have such an appreciation yeah. for musical people and i'm such like people think i'm odd when they come visit me um they'll say things like there was music playing all mm -hmm. night like did did you know that and i'm like yeah that's my sleep music yeah i can't music. function without like i'm always doing something with music so i yeah. would be interested like he was so musically gifted um on so many levels i mean you could say the same thing about Mozart or you know what I'm saying but right. John Lennon from a more contemporary perspective right um mm -hmm. and and I think they the Beatles in general braved so many roads that people just hadn't before mm -hmm. right I mean and again you could say the same thing about Elvis just in a different way obviously right. Right? right um but to change the the face and the scope of music from what it had been just a couple of decades prior because I also love musical history I'm weird like that um let's see that's three right yeah okay um i would love to meet jane austen okay you know in some ways that just kind of the foremother of modern romance that would be right. so interesting to pick her brain and i think it's so funny that they thought that she was pornographic back in her day <laughs> 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 just you know i <laughs> think that's hysterically funny it was. Um, yeah, you got one more. I do. Uh, you know, somebody like Maya Angelou would be interesting. Just, again, with such a gift for words yeah. and a way. Being a novelist is one thing because right. you have all this space to spread out, right? But when you do something, and, and she did so many things that were just so profound in such a short space. Yeah. Where I'm like, okay, that's a gift, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like it's like a lyricist too, where you just yes. you have so many, you only have so much space, and you have to be pithy and you have to be Robert. quick. Yeah. yeah, and I would love to just be able to talk to somebody who can just so much, like, get in that space and find the perfect word, in and and be brief and yet profound. Yes, I love that. Shayla, your table is lit. I love it. I'm coming to your party. I'm coming to your I party. think it would be fun. Like a lot of cadavers, but you know, we'll make do. I absolutely love I absolutely love it. Shayla, this has brought us to the end of my interview. But before I go, I have one question. I got one more question. To okay. Ask. I'm Wait, here. what they saying over here in this old chat, honey. Hold on, they talking about chat. Let me see what they saying. Can we get only five people? Can we get a bigger table? No, girl, Shannon. Girl, we only got one girl. We only have five, honey. You only got five. Bill Black said, shut up my vote, Paul. And yes. Okay, okay. My husband's crazy. He likes Paul. Oh, yeah. Chef Ramsey. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Ramsey. Yes. He could do the cooking. That would be he awesome. <laughs> yes, I love it. I absolutely love it. And they also said, to, uh, you know, they um, send a condolences for your lawsuit for your dad. So thank you. Thank I you appreciate guys. that, y'all. You guys are awesome. Thanks, Karen. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, y'all know what's up. Y'all know how we are. We right, righteous and ratchet, honey. That's what we do. <laughs> That's what we do. Now, before we ask this last question, Shayla. Yes. So with all things Shayla Black, where can they go? You know, we need your websites, your social media handles. Where can they go to pick up your books and all the other good stuff? And um, again, we're going to do the, we're going to um, get the link and drop it in the description box, box below for 
the revenge fuck baby because we got to get this book yes yeah. i'm so excited um so everything um shaylablack.com you know has all the things um i do have my own stores so uh most ebooks um i have a little bit of audio i also have every print book i think except for two that are officially out of print but i do all signed all the time i'll ship pretty much anywhere in the world um and like i said ebooks some audio that's the best place to go i'm i'm wide so i'm on every platform i'm not a ku girl and um like I said, if you're not sure where to find the Kickstarter, you can look on Kickstarter and just um, search for Shayla Black. I also have a Facebook and Insta. I've got a TikTok. Like I'm pretty much, pretty much everywhere. I think I even have a, I do. I have a Pinterest even. It takes me a hot minute to remember all the things, but yeah, I'm pretty much everywhere. We absolutely love it. All right, Shayla. If you were writing a book about your life, what would the title be? Um, you know, I have a neighbor, um, and we walked a lot, um, a couple of years ago before her kids, she has younger kids and their school times change and she can't walk in the mornings anymore. Um, but we used to talk all the time and she looked at me at one point and she was like, I feel like what you say to me pretty much every time we start talking about, um, you know, kind of what you're doing and, and what's happening in life. She goes, I feel like the thing you say to me all the time is um, that you, you want life to be meaningful. So it, it's something, it would be something about, you know, find like doing what you find meaningful. I love it. Doing what you find meaningful. I absolutely love it. Ladies and gentlemen, New York Times, USA Today's best-selling author, Miss Shayla Black. Thank you. This is so much fun. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, my friend. I'm so happy that you are here with me. This is perfect. You're awesome. You're the best. Oh, I think you're pretty, you're pretty awesome yourself. And this you is, know, girl, I try, you know what I'm saying? I, I be trying, girl, you know, I'm with going no, and something. just as a complete aside, like your earrings are killer. Like those are awesome. I love those. Thank you. I'm an earring girl, honey. I give me, I love a good earring. I'd be like, oh, who's earring the eyes? I'd hook you up with them, girl. No, you know that's awesome. <laughs> All right, hold one second for me, Shayla. Hey, y'all, y'all know what's up. Listen, thank you. The replay, make sure you do the replay. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe, uh, share, tell your friends. Go to Shayla Black's website and get everything that has her name on. I'm trying to tell you that forbidden um, confessions, baby. Maybe it's beautiful. It's over there. It's beautiful over there. It's beautiful over there. Her, her collaborations with Lexi Blake, the Minaj series. Make sure you go pick up everything that has Shayla Blake, uh, Shayla Black name on it. All right. Her new book is out now. Go and get it. And then we're gonna get like nine, ten more books out this series. All right. If you haven't signed up for Raw, the Raw Experience is going out October 11th and 12th in Alexandria, Virginia. Virginia is for lovers. Y'all know last year was all fun, da, 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 the chain. Next year is gonna be, it's gonna be bananas. It's gonna be, it's gonna be just eight shit crazy. I'm telling you, we're gonna try to holler, we're gonna holler at Shayla see if we get her, you know, get out, come outside and play with us down in Alexandria. It's gonna be wonderful. Make sure you come back next week. Lexi Blake will be in the building, so make sure you tell everybody that Lexi Blake is gonna be here, and we're gonna have more fun. We will see you guys next week. Y'all know what's up. Stay positive, but most of all, stay safe. Open up your brown book, baby. It's for you. It's for us. A fantasy. No one can judge us. No one can judge us. This is for us. Open up your brown book, baby. Open up your brown book, baby.